we will call this meeting to order. <laughs> the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning and Policy Committee is now in session and we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance. Stan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Couch. Here. Blades. Here. Present. Crump. Here. Tafoya. Here. Cryer? Here. Lucinovich? Here. Prout? Here. Reyna? Here. Scrivener? Bob Smith? I am here. Phil Smith? Here. Trujillo? Here. Vasquez? Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later <laughs> meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Are there any public statements? Any online public statements? <coughs> Don't see any. Seeing none. We will move on to item number three, Special Action Assembly Bill 361. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to let you know that Cindy Parra is on the line as well. So we'll mark, mark her here. Um, this item John is the item TV that um, we have every month so that we can continue to have these meetings virtually and in person. Um, and staff is just asking that you adopt resolution 22-06. Thank you. A motion? Yes. Motion. Second. Roll call vote, please. Couch? Yes. Alcala? Danae's not here today. <coughs> Ryan Durham, District 9 Director, filling in as well. Okay, so uh, Dermody? Yep. <laughs> Blades? Hi. Crump? Yes. Tafoya? Yes. Kiernan or Kersey? Yes. And is it Kersey? Yes, it's Kersey. Okay, thank you. Cryer? Here, yes. Lisenovich? Yes. Para? Para? Yes. Prout? Yes. Yes. Reyna? Yes. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Trujillo? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Item four, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda from the public? Does any member wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote, please.
Trujillo. Yes. Bill Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Raina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Para. Yes. Lisenovich. Yes. Navarro. Navarro. Navarro? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Kiersey? Yes. Tafoya? Yes. Crump? Yes. Blades? Aye. And Couch? Yes. Thank you. Item five, Federal Transportation Improvement Program. Draft amendment number eight, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Amendment number eight includes revisions to the transit program. The public review period ends tomorrow, January 21st. The Kern Cog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on January 24th. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you. I will open the public hearing. Are there any comments on this item from the public? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Item number six, status on the solicitation for a new consolidated transportation service Agency CTSA for the elderly and disabled, Mr. Snotty. Thank you, Chairman. Members of the committee. Sure. Thank you, Chairman. Members of the committee. On March 22nd, 2021, the Chief Executive Officer of North of the River Recreation and uh, Parks and Recreation District, our current CTSA service provider submitted a written notice to our executive director that they were interested in terminating our contract. Since then, we issued a request for a proposal, followed all the channels, and tonight we're gonna report that uh, Golden Empire Transit is in negotiations with uh, NOR to take over the service and uh, effective July 1st, 2022. So we're in the process of bringing those two, uh, comp uh, two organizations together. Uh, we've talked to them uh, from our side, and tonight we have uh, the CEO from uh, north of the river. Uh, we have uh, Mrs. Miss Jamison, and we have uh, the CEO of Golden Empire Transit, Miss King. And if you have any questions, I'm sure they'd be happy to say hello. Thank you. Well, I would just like for both of you to get up and tell us uh, what a great uh, <laughs> marriage you're making and how this is going to move forward. <laughs> so I'm Anya Jamison. Microphone, please. Thank you. I'm Anya Jamison, and I'm the general manager of North of the River Recreation and Park District. And we have been meeting um, with Karen and her team with, um, with um, GET. And I'm excited that we have a, a good solution to this, um, to providing this program in the future. And um, NOR has really, um, it's been a good run and we have enjoyed and felt the need to, to support and provide services to the community. Um, at this time though, I'm very excited that um, GET will be um, taking on the CTSA. Thank you. Ms. King. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. It's been a long time since I've been here. It's <laughs> nice to see all your faces. Um, as uh, Manya indicated, we've been in talks as to how GET could take on this responsibility of providing service through the CTSA and relieve north of the river of that responsibility. We have a schedule slated to do that by July 1st, sooner if possible. 
the GET board on Tuesday night this week directed the GET staff to uh, form a plan of action and to begin implementation of that plan to assume the role of the CTSA by July 1st and to notify Kern Cog of our willingness to do that. We did that yesterday and I guess we're doing it formally tonight. Thank you. Thank you and we, we do appreciate you working together mm -hmm. and, and moving forward this for, for the community. There was concern that you know maybe there'd be a gap and things wouldn't happen and, and really appreciate it working out. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. This was just uh, meant to be a, uh, an information item and we want to especially thank Manya for coming here tonight. She's a recovered from uh, the COVID virus, so mm -hmm. she made a special effort to be there. We're glad that she's back on her feet and healthy. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think there's maybe someone from the public who wants to ask Is there someone online from the public that would like to comment? Uh, this is Chris Fendrick, unless there's somebody else in the line. You've got the floor, Mr. Fendrick. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, Chris Fendrick, uh, Greater Bakersfield Council of the Blind, would like to thank Ms. Jameson and Ms. King for working this out in partnership together, showing our community coming together for the good of, of everybody in our community. Um, it's definitely a trying experience of having to rely on transportation to get to work um, or, or health and doctors or just recreation and able to get our seniors out in the community. Um, but I really applaud you guys for coming together. Unfortunately, I was unable to be at the GET meeting on Tuesday, but um, hearing that news that you guys are moving forward uh, sooner than later, uh, again, I commend you guys and thank you very much for listening to the public and uh, addressing this issue. And also applaud Mr. Snotty and uh, Kern Cog for, um, you know, watching out for everybody in our community. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Couch. I, I, is there going to be any change to the level of service? And I'm specifically interested in um, seniors being given rides to the Rasmussen Center. And you know, if they want to get back to me later, that's fine. Mr. Snotty's coming to the microphone. We'll see if he's got an answer. Mm -hmm. As we Thank speak you. tonight, the service as we speak tonight, the service will remain as it is currently. However, the details and in getting into the weeds is too preliminary to get into specifics. So that's what we know as of today. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Please get back to Supervisor Couch as you through the chair. Uh, also, one of the benefits that the CTSA has is they have the addresses and contact information of their clientele, which is extremely important. We can uh, update the CTSA if there are any changes. We can let the, per, uh, the current riders know about it through one communication form or another. So they'll be, they'll be aware of what the changes will be when they occur. Thank you. And I understand Mr. Akimi, you, you mentioned something about grants available and stuff that perhaps GET could start applying for already. So M Ms. King, uh, as she said, notified me yesterday. Uh, we will, I'll bring back the official uh, designation of Golden Empire Transit back to this board <laughs> next month. And if you, uh, if the board approves that, uh, we've already worked with Caltrans and have gotten the okay that Golden Empire Transit can start applying for grants now uh, with the understanding that they will take over on July 1st. So yes, Golden Empire Transit is, is now eligible to apply for federal grants as the CTSA operator effective July 1st, 2022. Thank you. Get to work on that. <laughs> I'd like uh, to say a word real quick, this is Cindy Parra. Yes, I Ms. Parra. I just wanted to, to, to say uh, to both um, CEOs, this is this is going to be a great transition. Our, our 
asking, trying to, to, to bring this all together and for them to bring this together during a time when, when our staff is, is at an all-time low right now because of the pandemic. And I just wanted to thank for uh, taking this on and uh, moving forward so quickly. Thank you. Any other comments? And then I'll move on to Caltrans report. District 6. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Michael Navarro. Good evening, members of the committee. A uh, couple quick updates before I get into the project. Just one last reminder about Clean California, the local grant program at $300 million towards the uh, competitive program. Applications are due February 1st. They're expecting a, a really huge turnout for this uh, application process. They're projecting as many as 800 applications statewide. I uh, will be doing a review during the month of February and announcements will go out March 1st to get those projects moving. Um, also just wanted to share that on January 28th, we'll be traveling to Kern Cog. My apologies for not coming today. Um, we're kind of restricted on travel right now with the COVID and you know, the congestions. I thought better I attend virtually today, but we do plan on attending in person next week for the workshop um, to have a uh, robust conversation about opportunities for Union Avenue and do a workshop. So looking forward to that. We'll come and we'll bring some concepts we're developing uh, in-house right now, looking at different opportunities for complete streets enhancements, a couple of clean California, potentially look at some road diet options, et cetera. So looking forward to that conversation on January 28th. As for projects, the uh, Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, this is the project that's modifying Route 58, State Route 99 interchange. Uh, progress is continuing on this, on the new westbound 58 to 99 connector under crossing. Uh, work continues. The Ming Avenue off ranch remain closed during reconstruction due to the weaving distance. This project is expected to wrap up spring of 2022. The State Route 99 rehab project from Palm Avenue over crossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge. Uh, mainline work continues completing hot mix asphalt and continuous uh, reinforced concrete pavement. Uh, work on some punches items as well. And then State Route 178 Buck Owens Boulevard, uh, widening of the southbound on ramp from westbound 178 and uh, realign traffic to the ultimate alignment. This project anticipated to uh, wrap up in spring of this year. The uh, rehab project on old US 99 to White Lane, State Route 99 rehab project. Um, currently, the tree removal occurring, placement of hot mix asphalt within the uh, stage one limits, and uh, removal of existing subgrade and continuous, re continuous reinforced concrete pavement rebar. Uh, start of stage two traffic handling at the south of the project is commencing as well. This project is a little farther out, anticipate completion of spring of 2023. Uh, in Arvin, the State Route 223 Derby Signal Project. About 90% complete. Remaining work is installation of signal poles in coordination with the railroad uh, signals and crossing arms. Pole delivery has been somewhat delayed and delivery is expected to occur toward the end of this month. The State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout. Uh, this project advertised on January 3rd and bids will open on February 8th. Uh, State Route 223, State Route 184 Roundabout. Um, Bids open on January 4th, way for project award expected February 4th. Uh, Union Avenue high intensity activated crosswalk. This project is on Union Avenue at 8th Street. Uh, that project achieved ready to list status on December 20th. Uh, as, as mentioned previously, we are purchasing poles using maintenance funds to accelerate and shave hopefully about four months off the original delivery schedule of this project. State Route 46, uh, segment 4B. Uh, this is a um, project near Lost Hills from uh, west of the California Aqueduct to east of Lost Hills Road. Uh, traffic is on the new roadway, the future westbound. Eastbound 46, excavation from Bruning Avenue to Lost Hills Road. Uh, curb and gutter construction, sidewalk construction, and drainage system installation will continue through next month. Um, DWR permits the granite construction and Verizon and Lost Hills Utility District are complete. This project scheduled for completion in February of 2023. And lastly, uh, State Route 46 gap closure project, segment 4C. The project is currently in des design. We have a 95% constructability review on the design package scheduled for this month. 
right away acquisition is underway and we anticipate this project being to go out for advertisement in July of uh, this year. With that, that completes my report. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Navarro. I appreciate the work on Union Avenue and look forward to uh, seeing real construction out there. And Absolutely. I also have a question. Uh, we've had a bike share grant for some time now and we went to CTC with the revisions and and I understand we're somehow hung up in getting money through and approved and can you explain that to me? Um, probably not adequately. Um, that, that was brought to my attention uh, that there was some discussion about eligibility of it. This went to the regional bid process. Um, and I, the response I heard from headquarters recently that was shared email with, um, it, it is an acceptable time frame this is taking. So this has been elevated and I'll continue to follow up on it. But um, yeah, it has to do with the eligibility question. And um, like I said, we've elevated in headquarters and um, hope you can answer shortly. Yeah, I, I'm, I apologize I'm confused because I, like I said, we went to CTC, the project's been approved uh -huh. for some time and, and seems like a pretty late date to be taking a third look fourth look fifth look at it would appreciate Understood. if you can move that forward thank you chair uh, any other questions for mr. Navarro hearing none uh, wait, 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 we have I've Philip got a question Smith. for for you and then for district uh, six as well uh, highway 58 is getting uh, s several spots between General Beale Road and uh, tower line and just before you get to Comanche this it's becoming uh, a really rough road everybody's hanging in the left lane just to avoid the roughness of it and it just uh, is there anything in progress for and and beyond that area as you approach into Bakersfield to uh, 184 just a lot of dips on the right hand side where people want to avoid that by crossing into the next lane or is there anything uh, on the works for uh, getting those potholes it's just a, a continuing issue it seems like yes I, I'd have to look into that for you but I, I could reach out to our maintenance crews to, to look into the pothole it's, it's occurring out there but as far as a, a project in the works right now I'm not aware of one but we are happy to look into that for you sir it's particularly rough westbound prior to tower line road from uh, about a mile or so east of that and the westbound lanes it, it's really rough and it's been rough for a, a long long time thank you for that chairman I'd like to have question certainly thank you good evening michael uh in wasco Highway 43 at 8th Street, that would be F Street and 8th Street. Um, it's been a um, couple of years uh, that we met with Caltrans about uh, putting some um, visible pedestrian crossing there and nothing has happened. Do you know uh, if there's any plans to do that in the future, in the near future? You said at Wasco and at uh, 43 and 8th Street? 8th, 8th Street. Right. Let me circle back with our, our investigation folks because I think previously they went out there and met with you in the in the field if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Um, so let me let me circle back with them. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for District Six? Hearing none, District Nine Caltrans. Well, good evening again, everyone. I'm Ryan Dermody, the District 9 Director out of Bishop. We handle Eastern Kern County, so I hope you're all doing well tonight. Um, I've got a few projects to go over, a few updates, and I do want to introduce a new team member to District 9. So uh, with that, let me start with a uh, celebration that's coming up on, let's see, February 1st at 10.30 a.m. On State Route 14, we'll be finishing up the what's known as the Mojave Rosamond paving project. And so if anybody's been in that area, you know, we have some K-Rail and 
it's two-way traffic because we're rebuilding lanes on each side of, of State Route 14. The project's been going on for quite a while and we're happy to report that soon all that K-Rail is going to go away and it will be wide open and people will be able to drive on it. So uh, we have inter, um, excuse me, we have asked for uh, Assembly Member Tom Lackey to, to attend and speak at the uh, ribbon cutting, but he will be in Sacramento in session. So Pamela Balk will attend and speak on his behalf and Supervisor Scrivener, I can't quite see if you're in the room there, but we also reached out to your office to see if you'd be interested in speaking, but haven't heard back yet. So just uh, wanna throw that out. Um, as for Clean California, Michael touched on some items going on for, for the desert region, or Eastern Kern. Uh, we do have some projects in the works, should be announced here in the next couple of weeks. But I can also tell you that we are hiring a maintenance crew dedicated to Eastern Kern County out of the Mojave Caltrans office. So they will be focusing on State Route 58, 202, 14, 395, working in that area. As we all know, there tends to be a, a buildup of trash due to high winds and whatnot. So very excited to have that happening. Um, I heard a mention on State Route 58 and our portion, we have a project in the works, which is known as the Keene Rehabilitation Project. It's pavement repair um, on State Route 58 from just east of Beaville Road to Tehachapi Creek Bridge, which will go to what we call RTL ready to list, advertised for construction October 24, so probably won't see construction till 25. But just wanna throw that out that it is in the works and, and we will get new pavement out there eventually. I um, also wanna thank the board for helping us get funding for the project approval and environmental document phase of location two for the state route 58 eastbound truck climbing lanes. Uh, we are working on environmental and the project uh, report for that project. And so hopefully we'll see, maybe we'll have a, an environmental document. I don't know, I'll have to ask Kirsten who I'll introduce here in a little bit. We'll find out when she thinks we'll be finished with environmental on that project. Uh, Tehachapi area, really exciting. A project we've been working on for a very long time, the Cummings Valley Road turn pocket. It's on Cummings Valley Road East at, on State Route 202. Uh, we are in the bid analysis phase and hopefully we'll be awarding very soon and going to construction very soon. So that's been a project on the books for a very long time. I'm excited to see that coming to fruition. Um, let's see, I think that's all I have right now for our project update. But as I mentioned earlier, I do wanna introduce a, a new member to our team. Um, you may all remember or recognize Kirsten Helton, who's in the virtual world here with me. And Kirsten has been around Caltrans for a very long time. Uh, since 2007, uh, in 2007, she was assigned to the Thomas Road Improvement Project um, environmental team in Bakersfield. So she was, she's very familiar with the Bakersfield area. Um, so I, I'm excited to have Kirsten as part of our team. She's our Deputy District Director for Planning and Environmental Analysis, taking over for what Danae Alcala had been doing. So you'll start seeing uh, Kirsten at these meetings from now on. And uh, with that, I wanna hand it over to Kirsten if you wanna say a few words. And then with that, I'll take any questions. Happy to answer anything. Kirsten. Hi, I'll just say I'm happy to be here and, and glad to be working with y'all again. Thanks. Well, welcome, we look forward to it. And does anybody have any hey, questions? Welcome. Mr. Smith from Tehachapi. Thanks for all the projects that you're uh, you're doing in our area. Uh, it's good to see the uh, 14 Mojave Roseman coming to a close. And that's exactly what I'd like to see on the 58 route from Tehachapi to, uh, to where we have all those problems with the, with the pavement. And you're talking that those rehab projects are gonna be three years out, is that correct? Instead of anytime soon? But I I say that soon in Caltrans world, but yes, that's uh, it's on the books, it's happening, we're working through it, so it, it's coming. If we can accelerate it and make it happen quicker, I'd love to. Because it's getting real rough from Tehachapi down through uh, Keene in that area. Uh, the people just hang in the left lane, just like the other area in District, nine, or District 6 that I was describing. You're pr I'm sure you're aware of it, uh, just uh, elevating oh, yeah. the awareness, thank you. Any other comments for Caltrans? I know, just a quick, uh, Kirsten, this is Kyle Blaze from Richcrest. I just wanted to make sure I touch base with you at some point so I can uh, communicate issues, questions, comments, concerns. Thank you. Great, sounds good. Nice to meet you. 
Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I, I have a question for Kirsten. Certainly. K Kirsten, uh, uh, is the environmental work uh, that Kern Cog um, gave Caltrans the money for going to be delivered um, about the same time as that shop project will? No. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> no. Um, we took so we took a lot, quite a while getting going on the the truck climbing lane, getting it all um, set up and and open and ready for charging and working. So that's really just kicking off now. And the um, the Keen project is going to be wrapping up this this spring. So they're kind of they're off kilter. My my question is, is the environmental work going to be done before? the shop project goes to construction. So will the environmental work for the truck climbing lanes be done by uh, early 25, which is when Ryan said the uh, shop project may be able to start? Yes, it will be done by then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, any other questions? Thank you very much. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have uh, a few items on this agenda. The California Transportation Commission met on December 8th and, 8th and 9th. Uh, we had staff, including myself, that uh, attended that meeting virtually. The next CTC meeting is January 26th and 27th. That's next week. And both Bakersfield and Kern County and several of our cities have uh, items on that agenda. And staff from Kern Cog will be attending that. Over the past uh, several months, the Eight Valley Cogs have been meeting with uh, members of the Assembly and Senate, uh, working on planning a joint session with Caltrans um, to go over Route 99. Um, and Caltrans will be the host, and that's currently scheduled for February of, of this year. Please let me know, and it will be held uh, in, I'm sorry, March of this year same uh, same time as our regional awards I will be attending that and then coming back for the regional awards and then going back the next day but if you're um, have interest in in highway 99 through the uh, valley portion of um, Kern County or the valley portion of the Central Valley of California please let me know and we'll make arrangements for you to attend we've also continued discussions about the roundabout at 7 standard and 43 um, State Route 33 improvements, um, potential interchange on 99 between the new Route 58 improvements, either at Truxton or at Stockdale Highway. We'll also continue to attend uh, monthly meetings on State Route 46, also truck climbing lanes on Route 58, and we continue to participate in the B3K process. Subject to any of your questions or comments, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Hearing none, we will adjourn that meeting and move to the current Council of Governments meeting. Same roll call. Public comments. Are there any public comments for the Kern Cog meeting? Seeing none and hearing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull any items off of the consent agenda? Mr. Hightower. That's okay, better? That's better, close, yes. How do you hear me now? A little better. Okay. Yeah, we have some comments and questions on consent item number letter D, the ATP Cycle 5 Safe Route Cycling. Okay. Any members wish to remove any items? Hearing none, can I have a motion for all items except item D on the consent agenda? So moved. I make a motion.
Was that Olivia? Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Blades. Okay. That's fine. Will you yeah. second? Yep. Okay, thank you, Olivia. Roll call vote, please. Whoops, sorry. Mr. Couch. Yes. Mr. Blades. Aye. Mr. Crump. Yes. Ms. Tafoya. Yes. Mr. Cryer. Yes. Mr. Lisinovich. Yes. Ms. Prout. Yes. Mr. Reyna. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Ms. Trujillo. Yes. And I noticed that uh, Ms. Vasquez is now on the line. Would you like to vote on this? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now go to item D, Ms. Shirada. Hi, just one moment, I'm pulling my item up. Thank you. Good evening, board. Um, I'm Linda Urod. I'm a staff member for Kern Council of Governments. And the item before you tonight is a master agreement, a program supplement agreement, and a resolution um, allowing the board chair to sign the master agreement and county council to sign the resolution um, to approve an agreement with Caltrans to provide an active transportation program a project titled Safe Routes for Cyclists in Kern County's Disadvantaged Communities. Kern Cog submitted um, a grant application and was awarded $792,000 to carry out the program. Um, do you have any further questions? Thank you. Uh, we have public comment, so we'll hear what Mr. Hightower has to say. Good evening again, Chair, it's Troy Hightower. Um, as many of you may be aware, there's a number of disadvantaged communities in Kern County, and the state using their Cal and viral screen method, it ranks all the dis uh, disadvantaged communities on a percentage basis, where 100% is the most disadvantaged community. And so we're unable to determine where from the staff report these improvements are planned. It just says disadvantaged communities in Kern County, and there's a lot. And so um, we, we would like to suggest that the improvements be made in the highest rated disadvantaged communities or the disadvantaged communities and or communities that have the highest incidence of cyclists and pedestrian accidents so we, we're requesting locations or preferably a map of where these proposed improvements are going to be thank you mr chair uh, i comment uh, first mr uh, chairman please thank you uh, miss and mr hightower the the project that we're talking about is a non-infrastructure project it's a project that will involve education um, and outreach in the disadvantaged communities. We appreciate your comments and we will focus our efforts on the most disadvantaged uh, areas, but uh, it is not a project that will actually build infrastructure. Its primary focus is going to be on education. Mr. Chair, if I may follow up, I appreciate that and I would encourage Kern Call to um, involve the communities in those discussions and consideration of the projects. Thank you for the clarity. Thank you. Um, I will add, Troy, there were 13 disadvantaged communities 
all identified through the Cal Enviro screen and through the um, income qualifications per the ATP requirements. And I'll, I'm happy to share with you the maps and diagrams um, of those proposed 13 communities. Thank you. Any other public comments? Any member comments? Can I have a motion? Uh, Chair, uh, Chairman, uh, I just would like to know what that list is, so if it could be sent to me, I would greatly appreciate it. Certainly, if, if staff could send everybody out the, the map, maybe would be good. Yeah, yes, we, we will uh, send the map to everyone. And uh, as a reminder, the, the next, next step in this process, if the board approves this item, is we will put out a request for proposal, hopefully in February. Um, we will evaluate that request for proposals. Hopefully, we'll get responses. And then it will come back uh, to this board uh, again to a award a ultimate contract with the successful um, the s the s successful applicant or su successful uh, proposer. Uh, so th what, what's before you now is just we're agreeing to accept the, the money uh, from Caltrans. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Can I have a motion? Second. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Um, I'm happy to report that we finally um, held our meeting with SCAG on January 14th. Thank you to Supervisor Couch, Mayor Prout, Mayor Pro Tem Cryer, and Council Member Garcia, who all participated, as well as s staff from Kern Cog, um, at least a half a dozen elected officials from Southern California, and staff from uh, staff from SCAG. Uh, we agreed in. Um, to partner on several areas, including uh, rural road safety, traffic enforcement, and driver and uh, pedestrian and bicycle education. Friday, January 21st, which is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., the San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council will be meeting. And as a reminder, that council consists, for current COG, consists of uh, Chairman Smith, Mayor Prout and Supervisor Scribner. Later that morning at 10, 10.30, the same group will meet uh, as to talk specifically about uh, housing. That meeting starts at 10.30. I am very glad to report, and the full report will come to you next, mo next month, that our 2020-2021 financial audit is a uh, unmodified report with no findings. Congratulations to our administrative s staff. I know that's what the board expects and what the public deserves. Uh, and great job to all of them for another unmodified r uh, report with no findings and details to follow next month on that. As a reminder, your annual uh, Form 700s are due, not just to us, but to your respective agencies by April 1st. You can uh, uh, modify that form slightly and turn it into us. You don't have to necessarily start from scratch to do uh, a fresh one for us. In your um, folders tonight are a sc schedule of cash disbursements for November, a flyer for the 30, uh, 30th Regional Awards Ceremony, which, as I mentioned before, will be held Thursday, March 3rd. That event often sells out. Please get your tickets early. A flyer for the Transitions 2022 Transit Symposium. And I believe we'll be asking uh, 
Chairman Smith, if you will participate in that, if you haven't been already asked. And uh, Current Council of Governments Progress Report, uh, January 2022 edition. And as a reminder, Ms. Parham, if she's still on, I don't see her anymore. But um, I was notified uh, earlier today that Golden Empire Transit and the County Transit uh, Agency has cut back because of COVID to, uh, they've gone back to weekend hours, um, both in the Metropolitan Bakersfield area and in all the um, unincorporated areas and also where those uh, county buses stop into the cities. So they've scaled back service and have gone to Saturday or weekend hours. Subject to any of your questions or comments, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? She'd be out of here before you. Oh well. <laughs> Hearing none, I will move on. It's not time for that yet. I, I got it. I got this plaque here for oh, a Rebecca Napier, who it says has been around here for 15 years. A long time. <laughs> 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 you are greatly appreciated. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And we uh, look forward to the next 15. <laughs> 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 no. Oh, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> 40, 45, 45 by then, maybe. <laughs> thank you. All these other ones? No? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>